If I was starting a garden today, there are a lot of things that I wish I would have known and a lot of things I would have done completely differently. Here are seven of them. Hey there, welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. My name is Veronica and on this channel I teach people how to garden, homestead, raise their own animals, all of that stuff in the suburbs. So if that sounds good to you, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now today I'm telling you things that I wish I would have known um, if I was starting a garden today, you know, things I wish I would have known when I started my garden before and things that you should know before starting your garden or if you are, you know, just new to gardening, things that you need to know to make your garden successful. But before we go ahead and get started, I am going to remind you guys that my live workshop on October 16th is still up for grabs, all right? Um, so don't forget to check that out. I will leave the link in the description. It is a 90 minute, give or take 90 minute live workshop with a live Q&A at the end called how to grow 300 pounds of food in your backyard, all right? So if you garden in a small space like I do, all right, I have just under 100 square feet of gardening space. Um, it is all up against the fence here, all right? If you have a small space to garden with a normal size backyard, you can grow tons and tons and tons of food in your backyard, all right? I get asked all the time if that's even possible, um, how we go about it, and I am going to be covering everything that I do in that live workshop. So go ahead and grab your seat. I will leave that in the description below. Now to get started with number one, which is to learn everything that you possibly can about your growing zone. All right, you guys know I talk about this tons and tons on my channel. Um, know your hardiness zone, but not just know your hardiness zone. All right, it's easy to look up your hardiness zone. All right, do the research on your hardiness zone. I recently was talking to somebody that's gardening in this zone, zone 9B, Central Florida, where I live. All right, and she was growing things like um like radishes in the middle of summer no you're not going to be able to grow that that is just not going to work she was planning on growing okra now in fall winter when it's 40 degrees outside no that is not going to work all right know what grows in your zone that will save you tons of time because it's not going to be your fault well it is your fault all right because you didn't do your research but if you plant out these things and then they die I mean, they're, they're gonna die anyway because you're not growing the right thing, all right? You're not growing the right thing for the time of year for your zone and you should know that before you start planting things in the ground, all right? Just do your research on your hardiness zone. Make sure you know everything about your hardiness zone, your frost dates, all right? Your first date, your first frost date, your last frost date, um, how long you have the seasons, right? Here in Florida, we do not have one growing season. We actually have a season that's split up into two. All right, we have spring, we have somewhat of a break. All right, there are things that you can grow in summer, but mostly we have a break in summer and then we pick up again in fall and you can grow kind of the same things in fall and spring with a few differences, all right? But when I first started growing, right, like actually to produce lots of food, I didn't know that, all right? So I lived in Miami and I was trying to grow spinach in spring and that just definitely not gonna work. So know the kinds of things you can do, you know, do a quick search for things to grow October this hardiness zone or you know what plants grow in that hardiness zone just do some research because it is not going to go well um, if you are trying to plant things that just don't grow here now number two on the things that i wish i would have known if i were starting a garden today is i would have grown a lot more food all right i would have focused on growing food for eating all right not just like oh i planted a tomato and i got one tomato and look at that it's instagram worthy no i would have put a lot more emphasis on actually growing my own food because you're already you know in the garden you're already doing the stuff all right you just have to do it better and more in order to get more food so it's definitely very possible to max out your garden space and you know plant out as much food as you possibly can in your space but you have to know how to do that all right there's certain techniques um, things like vertical gardening things like square foot gardening um, succession planting intercropping things like that you need to be able to focus on those things instead of just you know oh look i grew a tomato all right so that is something i would have done very differently it took me a very long time to get comfortable with the idea that i wanted to max out my garden space i wanted to grow as much food as i possibly can so that i have food left over to put in the freezer for later and that is something that now that we have finally i have finally been focusing on that it's gone really really well and we have been able to grow so much food in such a small space all right this is just under 100 square feet of space and we grow tons of food even enough to put in the freezer for later and preserve and all of that so focus on growing more food um, instead of just being content with the one or two tomatoes that is what i would have told myself 
if I had to go back and repeat it. So for my next one, I'm gonna turn you guys around here um, so you can see my garden. All right, you can see I have some little seedlings that have been planted, all right, but I want to draw your guys' attention to this white stuff around it, all right? So all of this is diatomaceous earth, and these are my little kale seedlings. Now, I learned the very hard way that when I plant out kale, all of the aphids and the cutworms find my kale and I get no kale. All right, that is something that I have had to fix over the seasons. Um, and one of the ways I fix it is by using diatomaceous earth. All right, it's not the only way I fix it, but it is one of the main ways that I fix it. So my tip for you is to do pest prevention instead of pest control. All right, yes, pests will find your garden and you're going to have to do some sort of pest control and clean up and removing pests manually from your plants, which is never ever fun, all right? But I find, and I have found the hard way, that if you focus on preventing things from eating your plants and preventing pests from infesting your plants, then you're going to be much happier in the long run because you have a lot less manual labor to do and you won't have to wait until the pests are actually eating your plants and destroying your crops in order to start, you know, trying to get rid of them. All right, a lot of what I do um, is putting down um, diatomaceous earth and Bt ahead of time. Um, I also use neem oil directly in the soil to prevent things like leaf miners from destroying all of my crops, which I've had um, serious infestations of in the you know in the past. So what I do now is when I first plant out my crops, all right, first plant out my seedlings, I go ahead and put down some of these you know, pest control methods, pest prevention methods, as I like to call them, um, and just try to ward off uh, the pests from my plants ahead of time. Now, throughout the season, of course, new pests find my plants, and it's, you know, it's never 100% preventative. But this really does assist in, you know, doing less work down the road. Now, there are several different types of pest prevention and pest control methods that you can use besides using that BT um, or diatomaceous earth or whatever else that you actually have to put on your plants. One of which is actually planting things out like this, all right? These are little flowers, all right? Some of these are zinnias, some of these are sunflowers, um, and I've just come and kind of tucked them over here in between my plants. All right, you can see some in there. I have a few of them over here. I have some sunflowers, all right? And what that's gonna do is attract pollinators and other predatory insects to my garden so that when aphids and other, you know, cutworms and caterpillars and that sort of thing show up on my bean plants, on my tomato plants, um, the predatory insects actually hunt those things that I don't want and they kill them. Um, so I have to do less work. The same thing applies for companion planting, all right? Companion plants can be a great source of pest prevention, all right? For example, um, I like my tomato plants. I love growing tomatoes, but my tomatoes, um, and a lot of my seedlings actually, but mostly my tomatoes get infested with cutworms. Now I did some research and a good plant to prevent cutworms is actually sage. All right, so growing sage near that area um, will prevent pests from, well, will prevent cutworms from growing um, or from finding my tomato plants, all right, which is a great combination. I get sage, I get less cutworms, more tomatoes, the whole thing works out, all right? So if I were starting my garden now, I would look up a companion plant for each of my main plants that I wanted to grow, but I would also, you know, if I notice I'm getting a lot of aphids or cutworms or whatever else, I would look up plants that deter aphids, plants that deter cutworms, plants that, you know, prevent those things from attacking my plants, and I would plant those around the area um, to kind of ward off any pests. So the next thing I would do if I were starting my garden today would be to plant out more varieties. All right, so in the past, right, I've had a couple varieties of beans, um, some salad green varieties, all right, my lettuce, like normal things that you would find at the grocery store or at like a big box, you know, garden center kind of thing. All right, but what I've been doing um, little by little, you can see there's a whole bunch of different types of miscellaneous packets of seeds here, um, is I have been experimenting with different varieties of crops and I would do that much sooner if I had to start a garden today from scratch. If I was starting a garden today, I would also track my lessons learned and review them the before the next season, all right? 
This is something that I started doing after a couple of years because I was noticing that I was making the same mistakes over and over and over again. All right, so I would just jot them down at the end of the season. Um, things like, you know, I started them too early or I started my seeds too late or, you know, this variety did not go well or this variety produced much better or if I, you know, grow stuff on trellises, they're less likely to get infested with pest and disease. Things like that were really helpful when I would review them um, in the following seasons because I wouldn't repeat the same mistakes over and over again. All right, and you think that you won't repeat the same mistakes, but we are people, we're creatures of habit, and we do repeat the same mistakes, unfortunately, many times over. So by having a list of those and, you know, reminding yourself to check them before the beginning of the season, you can save yourself so much time and headaches. Now, also over here at my little seed table, the next one I would do if I was starting a garden today is to learn to seed save much earlier than I did. All right, I started saving my seeds um, a couple years actually into gardening. So you can see I have some acorn squash. These are something that I save from, um, these are seeds that I saved from the first time I grew acorn squash. I have some of these little brown seed packets. All right, I have some okra seeds in here. I have squash, I have yellow wax beans homestead green beans and I really started seed saving way too late in my opinion all right it is so easy to save seeds to let these things go to seed or like in the case of yellow squash when you actually cut the the fruit open all right you have seeds inside and you can just dry them and seed save all right or like okra for instance if you let the entire pod just dry out on the plant it'll give you a whole bunch of these little orange okra seeds all right, so I just started collecting my seeds, but I would do this way sooner if I had to start gardening from scratch um, because this saves you so much money. I have hundreds of dollars of seeds. All right, but these ones here were free because I collected them myself. Now, the last thing that I would do if I had to start gardening from scratch is to observe nature. All right, instead of just planting everything out and constantly being go, 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 try to get all the plants and follow the back of the seed packet to a T, I would just watch how things grew, all right, instead of trying to make them and force them to grow my way, all right, if certain varieties were more pest resistant, I would jot that down, I would observe what grows better in my area, all right, just because, you know, somebody in California zone 9b says that those things grow great over there doesn't mean that they're going to grow in Florida zone 9b, so I would put them in my garden and observe them, all right, for instance, I had my Marvel of Venice pole beans, which were supposed to grow really, really well, all right? But I grew them several times and they never really worked out for me, all right? So if you have to start, gar or if you're going to start gardening from scratch, all right, if you're at the beginning of your gardening journey, observe your garden, all right? Take morning garden walks. Just sit out there and watch where the pollinators go. Watch where the pests show up, all right? Watch the way things grow and vine and you know, just work their way up the trellis, watch those kinds of things, make the observations because that will help you to be a better gardener in the long run. I absolutely promise. Um, if you want to see a video on how I actually do my morning garden walks, things I look for in my garden to prevent pests and disease and all of that stuff to make sure I'm catching the problems before they arise, I will leave that here on the screen somewhere. Don't forget to register for the workshop, the live workshop on October 16th, if you are interested and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.